Good evening, everyone. I hope you're having an amazing day so far. Thank you so much for being able to make it here today. I'm Lamisa Mahmood, and I'm a member of TAG, or the Teen Advisory Group at Toledo Public Library. What is TAG? You may be wondering. Well, TAG is just a group of teen volunteers that help plan teen services and events at the library. We developed this initial idea for the event as a way to give teens a platform to talk about an um, an important topic, such as Black Lives Matter. So we really hope that you enjoy this opportunity. And remember that this is a safe place to respectfully discuss anything relating to Black Lives Matter. So don't be afraid to provide your input. Thank you, Lamisa, for that amazing introduction. Hi, everyone. My name is Autumn. Um, I want us to start off just by kind of doing introductions and getting to know each other. Um, so I will start off with kind of my intersections. I am a black woman. I'm new to Texas. We've lived here for two years. We're from DC. Um, so very different world for me. I grew up in like Chocolate City when I was growing up. Now it's Chocolate Chip City, but it was Chocolate City when I was growing up. Um, so this idea of uh, Black Lives Matter as a movement is really interesting to me because I grew up in a black city, went to a black church in the black city and grew up to go to a black college in another black city. So that's kind of the framing that I'm coming from. Uh, who wants to go next and kind of introduce yourself and just kind of give us a little bit on your point of view and where you're coming from? I can go. Um, I'm Rihanna. I go to, I'm a senior at Fleur High School. Um, I created a Juneteenth and Black Lives Matter memorial event um, about almost a year ago. Um, I had a car parade and I had a memorial service. I had um, a candlelight visual where I, um, like the duration of, the, uh, of George Floyd uh, being killed, I read out people's names that died, like children and adults. And I read, I said their name, their age and how they died. And yeah. You guys can jump in or I can find a teacher voice and call on folks, it's up to you. I'll go next. <laughs> Um, hi, everyone. My name is Celeste Pater. I attend Brentwood Christian. I'm a senior there. Um, it's a predominantly white space, white school, so it's very interesting at times going there. Um, you said, Miss Autumn, you said that you grew up in D.C. I think that's amazing. I want to go to Howard, so I just loved hearing that. Um, I'm, I'm definitely feeling, uh, as I've gotten older, how do I explain this? Like, my identity as a Black person has definitely, not saying that I didn't care for it when I was younger, but when you're younger, you're kind of carefree about things. But as I've gotten older and I've been in like a predominantly white space, like I just find it so important. And um, I think we definitely need to have this conversation um, because there are people who are not going to have this conversation because they don't have to. And I think it's important that um, people get to hear other each other's perspectives. And if they will not ever be able to understand, at least they can try to understand and have some empathy. So, yeah. Celeste, you should know that I am like secretly your internet auntie pulling for Clark Atlanta. But if you go to Howard, it's not that bad chance. <laughs> That's so funny that you say that because I'm wearing a Clark sweatshirt right now. I'm so here for your clerk sweatshirt right now. We can talk about that more later. <laughs> Who wants to hop in next? Um, hi, everyone. I'm Zarian. I'm a sophomore at Weiss. Uh, my school is really, like, diverse and everything, so we really, we really don't got to worry about nothing, like, racist or anything like that. But my school is, like, they are really big on Black Lives Matter, and, like, they not in, like, to everything, like, racial or whatever like that, so yeah.
I think we haven't heard from Jordan and Maddie. My name is uh, Daniel. I'm in seventh grade, and I draw. And school doesn't really talk a lot and stuff like that. I don't know why, but it's nothing. I I don't have I don't really have anything else to say. And, um, I'm in the magnet program. I, I don't I don't really know what to say. Jordan, you're up. Um, my name is Jordan, and I'm in seventh grade. And um, my mom took me out of school, so I'm at home school, so I really don't have a problem with, um, like, being like the racism and stuff but like it's the first but my mom um made like a program that we did um for her black lives matter and um teaching black history for the month of february okay so now that we know where everybody is uh, we're gonna spend most of our time kind of talking about Black Lives Matter, whether you feel like Black Lives actually matter in your school and in your community. So beyond just like a statement or a movement, do you feel like your life and your friends' lives uh, who look like you matter? Um, so I will stop there because I really want to hear what everyone has to say. Some of you started to touch on school a little bit. Who wants to kick us off? How about Zirian? You started to say that you feel like your school is diverse and the climate is good. Can you just talk a little bit more about um, whether you feel valued at school and in your community and what that feels like for you, if you do? Um, my school, yeah, it's like, how would I say that? Like, we really don't have to worry about um, uh, going through racism and stuff because my our assistant principal is black. We have a whole bunch of administrators that came over that was black and everything because they switched our administration and Conley's and like they switched it. So like now like our administration is mostly black and everything. And um so like we really don't have to worry about that. Uh there is very diverse, like how would I say like um we learn about it sometimes. Uh, like in Black Hit in uh, February last month, we learned about some type of Black history and like some of my history classes and stuff. So it's like we basically have no problem with it. That's how I would say it. Do you feel like the um, from someone who doesn't have that? I have to say, that's no, go ahead. I was just going to, um, sorry, it's hard to unmute and not talk over people. Um, I said uh, to Zarian, like from someone who doesn't have that, I think that's beautiful and wonderful. So, Do you want to talk more about your experience, Celeste? Sure. So um, when I, I'm going to go a little bit farther back. So at, in elementary school, I went to a very diverse school. Um, Wells Ranch Elementary specifically. And then in fifth grade, I moved to Highland Park, which was also diverse. And then in middle school, moved again, um, I transferred to Brentwood Christian, which is a private school in North Austin. And I've been there since sixth grade. And um, I, at times it's very hard and it's isolating because I am literally the only black person in my grade. And there actually was an incident a few weeks ago where um, I had gotten into a discussion with a few of my classmates about a stereotypical uh, joke about black people. And I was telling them that it was not okay to say that. And they just did not care to try and understand and show 
um, sympathy when I was telling them that that hurt me, you know, they didn't try to understand. Um, and so, sorry, I have like younger siblings trying to get into my room. Um, that in that moment when that happened, it made me feel very isolated because I wasn't able to talk to anyone and no one could relate. And because we're not having that conversation, they're not trying to, I guess the term, I'm going to sound cringy and old, but I'm not old, um, like woke, you know, be aware um, of like what's going on. Okay. I'm so sorry. I have, my siblings are literally like um, four, no, five and two years old and they don't have any respect for me. Um, and so I just I don't feel like, and I, I don't want to bash my school because um, I am also a Christian. And so from a Christian's perspective, um, like I appreciate the religious aspect of my school, but when it comes to supporting my other identity as a black female, I do not feel um, supported or valued in that way or seen really. Yeah. I think that's super interesting because I was thinking yesterday just randomly about these intersections, right? And I also identify as Christian, but I identify as Black, then woman, then Christian. And I was struggling with this myself because I know that we're supposed to identify as Christian first. And like, that is just not right in my head. So I think it's really interesting that you've articulated that. Who else has thoughts to share? So, um, I mean... With me going to a Fulgerville school, I'm pretty biased about it because our school doesn't really talk about Black Lives Matter. They're, they're just very quiet about it. I mean, granted, our school is very diverse between the teachers, the students, and our principal is a Black woman. So, but I don't really know. But um, yeah, they don't really talk, especially in high school, I guess in all schools, they just don't talk about like black history. Um, they don't really talk about just what's going on in the world right now, considering black lives matter, because it's very, it's very divided since our world is so divided. Pe like our schools are so scared to talk about it because there's going to, there's going to be people that don't believe in black lives matter. And there's going to be people that do, and they don't want that argument in our schools. And then people withdraw from our schools. And so they don't want that. So it's pretty biased. Do you feel like in not talking about it, does it impact the way you feel like you are seen or matter in your school community? Um, I mean, as a black and white person, I feel that, that I kind of would feel the same because granted I'm half white, half black. Um, yeah, I feel like I would be a little more seen if they talk about it more. Because, like, I don't really, I don't really, like, tell everyone that, like, oh, yeah, I'm black. Like, um, because I grew up around nothing but my, but white, but white people. And, like, because my parents didn't really want me to be around my black family because of the way they acted. Um, and so growing up, especially in, a, like, Fleurville District, people would call me whitewashed. And, um, and be like, why do you talk so white? And, and I feel like that's the problem with our students today is that they think just because a black person acts white is not okay. They think like, they think that black people should be act, they should be acting a certain way. And I feel like that's one of the big issues in our school and universal in every single way. May I speak? Of course. Oh, okay. Sorry. Um, I have to see what you're, Rihanna, I have to see, I have to click to see what your name is. Um, I have definitely been told before that I speak, like someone asked me, it, was, it wasn't even a uh, white person. It was actually one of my black friends at church. She was like, why do you speak white? And that really bugged me. Um, like, why does speaking, quote unquote, and I, everyone does not have to speak this way. I want to clarify before I say this, but why does speaking, quote unquote, properly, you know, 
um, why does that have to be associated with the race? Like, why is that considered white? You know, like, <laughs> um, yeah, I, I just want to say that's like a problem in itself, associating certain characteristics, such as the way I speak with a, with being white. Yeah. And that's also saying like black people don't speak properly. That's making that assumption that we are uneducated. Like, yeah. I think Jordan and Nathaniel are next. You guys want to hop in? Uh, yeah, sure. Um, I might have had like one, one situation. I don't, I don't, I don't really understand what happened because it was like a while ago, maybe in like fourth grade, fifth grade. But me and my friend, we were just minding our own business. Some, some like, uh, I think it's like a fourth grader. She called me and my friend. Like the hard R for like no reason. I don't. I don't understand. Maybe I had done something. I don't really know because it was like a while ago. And and then, uh, my my friend he like deals with stuff differently. I didn't really do anything. I just watched. But he he beat him up for some reason. And then like the teacher came, so we came back and the girl didn't get in trouble. My friend got in trouble, but I didn't really understand it at the time. Cause it's, it's going on so going on so fast, but I don't know. I just find it kind of weird. This is pretty. That's pretty much it. And the other time, uh, I was in the hallway, and and then I heard some. She she was white, right? And I heard some girl. She was talking about like, I don't know why, but in the context, in the context, I guess it made sense. She said the art hard too. And my friend heard it. We we both like looked back. So we went to go tell the a, a teacher, right? She completely ignored us, and she didn't do anything about it. So I guess like my school's kind of like quiet about talking about things like that. I I guess they don't really care. And so, does that make you feel like black lives are valued at your school and in your community, like? Do you like, kind of shrug it off, or I don't really care because I know I have better things to do than pay attention to these people. So, plus, I'm, I don't want to start something and then end up getting in trouble. So, I I really don't care. It doesn't bug me. <laughs> And then Jordan, I know you're homeschooling, but when you were in school, did you feel like Black Lives Mattered in your school and in your community? Was that different in different grades and different places? Well, I, I never really had an experience like that personally because um, I just moved to Texas from Maryland at the beginning of sixth grade. And we didn't really get to finish it. And nothing really happened in Maryland like that because mo my school was kind of diverse. Like my um, entire fifth grade class was, there were no white people in my entire fifth grade class. And then when we moved to Texas, we didn't really, I don't think any situation like that personally happened to me or anything in the school. I didn't, I don't think so. So do you feel like you are valued in school? Yes. I do feel valued in school. What about in the community as a whole? Uh, after George Floyd's death in June, when the movement kind of took on new life, how did you guys feel kind of navigating the community? Um, yeah, after George Floyd died, I was very, very upset. And when I found out people were protesting in Austin, I really wanted to go. I really wanted, because I'm a very, I very, I stay true to my opinion about a lot of things. So I really wanted to go down there and protest, um, peacefully though. Um, but my mom wouldn't let me. And 
I was thinking, I was just like, what can I do? What can I do? And, um, and like at the time, because of COVID, like I've had friends who, um, had birthday parties, um, like, like a drive by like birthday party. And I was like, I could probably do like a parade to show that the community comes together, um, to show support for black lives. And that's exactly what I did. Um, and it really showed how Fleurville, how diverse Fleurville is and how we can just stick together and that we're here for each other. That's, that's why I love Fleurville so much is that it's just so diverse and we're so friendly and I've never had any problem, but I guess in other ways where we can improve is just the people, the people that are very close minded about it. They hear black lives matter and they're like, Oh no, no, no. Cause there's, there's some people like here, there's some people like that here in Fleurville. And I just wish people would be more open-minded. There's not really, in my opinion, there's not really anything else that I could do personally, but it's up to the people. I can't make somebody um, believe in something that they don't. It's like believing in different religions. Um, um, so yeah, in my opinion, just at least trying your best to have people to have an open mind about it and actually to sit down and listen and to look at the facts and look at everything that's happened. And if they still don't want to believe it, then I, I don't know. Someone's got to think of something because I don't know. So Amanda just messaged to say that Joshua has joined us. Joshua, we talked about um, kind of like our intersections in the beginning and how we're showing up. And then we talked about whether we feel like Black Lives Matter in our schools and now we're on the community. Do you want to just kind of uh, let everyone know who you are, where you're from, and give kind of your thoughts on whether Black Lives Matter in your school? Uh, can y'all hear me? Yeah. Um, well, I'm Josh. I go to Weiss High School. And wait, what was the question? I'm sorry. <laughs> So it's who you are, where you're from, and then whether you feel like Black Lives Matter at school and then in community. Um, well, I go to Weiss and in the school um, last year, Miss White definitely was like, I remember it was like pushing for like the creation, like one of our counselors was pushing for like the creation of a NAACP at the school. Um, I feel like there hasn't really been that many like issues when it comes to like you know people of color at our schools so because of that there hasn't really been a push to create anything like that but yeah uh, i feel like it's just been it's been kind of neutral at least at weiss i don't know how it is at the other uh, high schools around the area but that's how it is for us so then the second question that we are just starting uh, Rihanna was the first person to kind of respond to it so you can start or anyone could start. The second question was uh, right after George Floyd died last summer and the Black Lives Matter movement kind of kicked up around the country. Um, how did you feel navigating your community and uh, whether you felt like your life mattered in the community? Um, there was definitely like a lot of like in that was June, right? Like around June 7th. I think that was June 7th, June 8th. But um when it comes to, I know that like when it comes to like um, at school, cause we were still doing like workouts and all that. It was like, it was kind of, it was just a lot going on, especially with COVID. There was just like a lot of tension going on, especially in the community. Like people were like, you know, there was no conversation between people. People were just passing each other by kind of not talking about anything. So I guess um, instead of saying like that, there was like a lot of, like there was like the opposite of confrontation for everything. It was kind of just like a bunch of like, like no one saying anything about anything. Who else wants to jump in and kind of talk about how you felt in the community overall or how you still feel in community? I feel like not as much people cared. They so like people are doing it for um what's the word? For like like a lot of people back then didn't really care as much. Now everyone wants to act like they care about it. 
but they really just do it so they don't seem as bad. Like, half of the people on social media acting like they, they care about it, but then do stuff to, like, completely, like, like, disre disregard it. I don't, I don't understand how to, like, explain it well, but I just feel like people are doing it for, like, 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 like clout now so like people don't think that they're a bad person but like a lot of them will have like like a like a racist path like a racist past like they'll do something bad but then everyone will like completely like forget about it or ignore it because maybe how they show themselves i don't i don't understand really how to explain it as well but that's my opinion on it I think you're doing a really good job of explaining it. Like Celeste, Jordan, and Zarian, I think you guys are the ones we haven't heard from on the phone. When that had happened, when George Floyd had died and stuff, it really kind of hit home because I've seen a lot of stuff as I was a kid. And, like, I've seen a lot of stuff on the news. And, like, when I seen that, it just, like, made everything worse. So then even though that we were in a pandemic, I really wanted us to go down there and protest because my aunt Annie went. But she took pictures and all. And the pictures that she took, they were actually good. But my mom wouldn't let me go because she would say everything. Like, I was a teenage black boy and stuff. And, like, they're really looking, like, to um, hurt my, uh, my age and, like, how I'm black and everything. So, like... I really, it was hard for me to just do anything, so I just had to focus on myself and that. But yeah, it really hurt when um when that had happened. Just thinking about um his family and stuff, and like how many people it affected. You said you had to focus on yourself. What did that look like? Like so, at the time we had football workouts and stuff. I had basketball and everything. Uh, I had family stuff going on, so it was like it was like a whole bunch of stuff going on around. So I like had to just focus on myself and just do what I do in the regular. Let's go, Jordan, and then Celeste. Um, can you repeat the question, please? So when George Floyd died last year and the Black Lives Movement really kicked up, the Black Lives Matter movement really kicked up, I'm sorry. Uh, how did you feel kind of navigating the community? Did you feel like your life mattered in the community? Like, how did you feel in that moment? Um, well, at first, well, the whole time, I was upset about it because, um, not, it was like, not enough people were paying attention and like actually like doing things about it. And the fact that it was questioned that the, or it's questioned that the, um, cops belong in jail or they have to deserve or that they deserve any, um, consequences for their actions um and that was what made me the most upset that they didn't really get anything like nothing really happened to them and if it was like a black person who did this or it wasn't a cop or something it just seems like it would be a whole different story and that was what made me the most upset Celeste, what about you? Um, sorry, my internet has been a little funky. Um, 
When George Floyd, are we talking about George Floyd or like the community? I'm sorry. The the question is. Yeah, so we're talking about how you felt. Like, did we feel supported by the community or? Yeah. How you felt navigating the community in the wake of George Floyd's death when the Black Lives Matter movement was really kicking up again? Did you feel like you mattered in the community? Did you have like experiences of navigating just the community and your surroundings or thoughts? Okay. Um, I honestly, during the pandemic, um, cause this happened during the, it's, we're still in a pandemic actually, but at the beginning, um, when it all happened, I did not get out much at all. And so I was pretty much at home because my parents, my really my entire family, I'm not going to blame it on my parents. Um, we were really just trying to not get COVID. And so what I really, my community was more virtual and not really physical. And so, um, I got to see it from a social media, uh, perspective and it was it was cool but also wasn't cool at the same time because I think that um Nathaniel touched on this a little bit how like some people uh were posting about it I think that's what I might have heard you say like as like a trend or something and like not really believing in what they're posting just doing that like but then also I had some friends who genuinely cared about Black Lives Matter. And so it was, I felt, I guess, I had mixed emotions because I would see, I would literally see people who did support it genuinely and people who didn't and just didn't talk about it. And so, um, uh, yeah. And then like the killing of George Floyd, Sadly, that is nothing new that has been happening in America for like decades, you know, but it was just another black man and not just another black man, but like seeing it. It was so it was cool. And um, it really weighed heavy on my heart. It, it weighed heavy on my heart um, because I... It's one thing to be a black person, but also I, don't, I will never know what it's like to be a black male. And recently I have had the privilege of um, being blessed to have a little brother and just seeing him in George Floyd, even though he's so young, um, how my mom and I have discussed this, how like people view him as so cute now, like he's so cute, you know, um, like he's just a ball of joy, but like how will they see him as an adult? Like now they don't see him as a threat, but like when he gets older, is his skin going to be considered like a weapon, you know? And like to see that we're still living in a society where the black skin is weaponized, um, it was just hard. And yeah, I don't know if I answered that <laughs> very well. It was perfect. Thank you. Um, so I always like to kind of end on action items. And I would like, Amanda, if you can open the conversation up to the whole group, all of the attendees. Uh, I want us to talk about kind of we've heard how our panelists feel. Um, only one of our panelists said he had like actual incident or two of our panelists said they had actual incidents. But uh, some people said that they felt like the conversations were just ignored, right, for the sake of not making people uncomfortable. Some people said that they felt like uh, people were having the conversation kind of superficially for clout. I would love to hear kind of what you guys think are next steps. And this is from our panelists and the people who've been listening in. Mm -hmm. And how do you think that we can... Um, as adults support you guys, but also as students, make sure that other students are supported in their school and community. Hey you 
guys. Uh, this is Amanda chiming in. Just to let you all know, I did unmute everybody now. So if you're not speaking, if you could go ahead and mute yourself again, because if I mute you, then you won't be able to unmute. <laughs> so uh, go ahead and do that. And then if you want to speak up, uh, go right ahead. Thank you. So who wants to kick off? You can talk about kind of what you can do from your position as students and what you would like adults around you to do. Um, I guess I could, I could just go first, but one of the reasons, one of the things that could kind of help, I guess, I just thought about it, is like having more, like having more African-American teachers in the school because like, we're like, I walk around like at least twice. I know Zay could probably say this too, because we both go to the same school, or Zarian, but like you walk around twice and it's literally just like, like admins or everyone, it's either you have it's literally just like a bunch of white admins and teachers and with and there's like i'm not saying that anyone because nobody is like at the school I, I personally haven't experienced like true like prejudice or racism but it's hard for someone that comes from a certain lifestyle to like be completely unbiased so if that makes sense so like it's just like you know you always get judged different than say someone that's not you know, a black male walking around your school. So like, it's just, this is different. And I can't really speak for a bunch of people at my school who've had those kinds of experiences. I haven't luckily, but that can't, like having like black people in like leadership positions can really change like a whole lot of how, like, you know, like you go about your daily like life at school. Um. I would like to say that I really agree with uh, Joshua. Hearing Nathaniel um, speak about his story about like the hard R being used against him and his friend, like, I don't hear that. And the fact that he told a teacher that that person did that and they didn't do anything about it. Like if that was a, a black teacher, like they definitely would have done something about that because Nathaniel. Um, you're so young and um, you're at an impressionable age. And so when a teacher doesn't react like that and try to come to your defense, it can, I mean, I'm, I'm not trying to speak for you at all, but it, for other people, other black kids, it can make them feel like they're in the wrong. So I definitely, like they did something wrong when they clearly didn't. And you said that um, Nathaniel, that maybe you did something wrong and that's why they called you the call uh, the hard r like no matter if you did something wrong you were never you never deserve to be called the hard r never and what whatsoever in any circumstance um so yeah what i'm just echoing what joshua said about um leadership because that does make a difference yeah i agree with all of you guys and um although i'm not african american I, I strongly advocate for Black Lives Matter just because I find it really sad that something as trivial as one skin color determines so much. Like, it just doesn't make sense to me. But I know too many, like, racist people out there, it does make sense, which I don't, under, I don't understand. But um, for the Black Lives Matter, one thing I really wish is that it had more long lasting momentum. Like someone mentioned, it was kind of like a trend. It's like, it started and it was like really strong and then it just kind of died out, which um, I really wish that that same momentum continued because I feel like that movement really bring up a lot of foundational issues that were there, but really weren't put or weren't emphasized on or um, brought up to the light. Um, and like another thing is for adults, I really wish that they wouldn't keep us so sheltered, if that makes sense. Like, um, like I always knew that racism existed, but if I'm being honest, like I never knew it was that severe. Like when I first heard about what happened to George Floyd, my heart broke. Like I couldn't explain how devastated I was, even though I wasn't an African-American, because he's a person and no one should have to go through that. And just speak, it could have been anyone, but he was chosen just because he was African American, which was just so sad to me. So I really wish that even as children, that more adults would expose everyone 
you know, no matter what your skin color is, to these types of issues that minorities go through, that African Americans go through, so that um, as we grow up, we can be more aware and we can start to take action even from a younger age. And I really feel like the more people that are educated about these things and not sheltered just because we're kids, the more likely there is for change to happen and for more people to take action. I'm tagging on to what Josh said. Um, I feel like that there should be more of like black leadership in schools because as growing up, like I've had like one, uh, I've had like one incident in like each part of school that I went to. So like in elementary school, I had one with one of the, uh, I think she was like a sister principal or something. And then middle school, I had one. And then last year we had a teacher, Miss White, Josh had her too. Um, we, it's like a, a lot of my friends, we all had her. So like in class, it's like she would put, um, I'm not trying to like be racist or nothing, but like she would put like the white kids in front of us or like grade their stuff before ours and like have us worrying about like if we're going to fail or whatever, or, like if we fail the test or whatever. So like is it, that really is what like made my mind start clicking about racism and then seeing everything on the news about like police, police violence and stuff like that. And then growing up watching movies and stuff, so, like, I feel like that having leadership in schools helps, too. But, like, this is, like, really the first year that we've had, like, almost um, all of our administration be black, like our assistant principals and everything. So, yeah. We have Jordan, Rihanna, and Nathaniel on the panel. And then we have other folks who are listening in. I would love to hear your thoughts. Josiah, Brian, Alina. I'm kind of going to go off of what Joshua and um, everyone else said. Like, yeah, we do need more leadership, like with clubs. Like, we need more, like, diverse clubs. Because, like, at my school, we have a lot of clubs, but, like, they're only designed for certain people. But, like, there's not really a group where everyone can be in it. Like, I know my school tried to have a um, Black Student Union, but, like, they didn't really do a lot. They would have guest speakers, but... We wouldn't really have the opportunity to actually take action and to do something. We would just get talked at. I mean, I love hearing about other people's um, backgrounds and what they've been through and their story. But, like, I want to be able to voice my opinion. And I know other people do as well. Um, I just I would just say more diverse clubs and people to be more accepting, especially with students and, and teachers as well. So. Um, what was the question? I wasn't here. The question was, what can students do to make sure that Black students, your peers, feel supported? And what can the adults around you do to help? For students, probably, like, back each other up. Like, if they see something going wrong, unless there's a person who completely doesn't care, but... For teachers, I don't really know what to say about that. I don't really have a solution to that in mind. It doesn't have to be just teachers. It can be, like, any adults in the community. For adults, probably, like, letting the school know about it or probably trying to contact the, something in the school to, like, help out or... Um, maybe, I, I don't really have any ideas. I'm looking down because I'm taking notes. I want to make sure we capture what you guys say are solutions. Uh, Jordan, what are your thoughts on I'm what students can do and what adults around you do? 
I think that the adults around us should try to inform us more about the things that are happening because um, a lot of people don't know or they will know, but they don't know the like a lot of things that are to be told and um, they don't say everything and they'll go past it. Like they will continue what they were doing and they won't like address it. And I think that the our peers around us need to say things like try to be a little bit more respectful on the things that they're saying to like their peers. Like um, like some of y'all said that y'all had um, things that happened to you. I feel like if our peers were a little bit more respectful, that wouldn't be happening to us and we wouldn't feel like it was our fault. Do you mind if I jump in? Go for it. Okay, so I think like the first step is probably just to like talk about it so that way we like recognize that it's an issue that we can then address because I don't think, I think we have to have like the discussion first about how it's an issue and why and like I can't, I'm so sorry to hear about the different incidents y'all had that sounded really terrible. But I think we need to like discuss it first that way we can address it and like come up with a plan to address it properly. Was that Elena? Yes. Okay. Um, I was going to say that I... Okay. No, okay. So I was just going to say that I definitely agree with what you just said. And I also think that one of the biggest things that students could do is just, you know, be informed or educated. And I feel like one of the best things that, you know, adults can do, especially if they work in school, is push forward their education on issues regarding, you know, race and racial intensity in general. Because I go to Round Rock, Round Rock students and staff are really racially insensitive. And it's just not a comfortable place to be in. I really don't even like my school like that. And I know most African American students, if not, you know, most students of color feel the same way just because of the ignorance around race within the school. I definitely have to agree. I'm from Round Rock High School as well. And like I'm also from the Black Student Union and I'm one of the officers in the Black Student Union. So we like talk about so many different stuff. And I, I don't know if it was one of y'all that said uh, y'all had a full black administration or whatever, but like that in itself, like that's a big thing because in Round Rock, there's none of that. Like we're doing good to get black teachers. Like, and I just really wanted to applaud that because that's awesome. Who was first? Was it Brian or Josiah? Oh, Brian was first. Brian was first. Okay. It's hard. It doesn't show your name when you're talking if you were not on the panel. Okay. Does anyone have any closing thoughts before I turn it over to Kinda to close us out? Any last reactions that you want to get in? Um, real quick, I so in my school we're getting like um uh, uh, African American studies or whatever. It's a history class that's coming next year. So like that's something that my BSU and in itself has been talking about like for so long. And the fact that we're actually getting for next year is just like amazing because yeah. Awesome. Well, thank you guys for an amazing conversation. Thank you for being honest and sharing and trusting the safe space. I am going to turn it over to Kendall. All right, thank you. Well, first off, thank you to all our panelists for, show, um, for sharing your perspectives and participating in this session. Also, thank you to those of you joining us today, um, both for the audience members and for those of you on the panel that live 
in or around the Pflugerville area, please consider joining the teen advisory group at the Pflugerville Public Library or the Diversity Teen Book Club. Uh, for both of those, you can find applications online. And I also want to give a shout out to Amanda, our youth services librarian, who is working behind the scenes. Um, and a recording of this event will be posted after the event for those of you who couldn't make it. Uh, with that, I hope everyone has a great rest of their night.